I know what it is. Y'all ready to see some legendary situation. I get it, y'all. Remember, I got the flyest intro beat, too. So it is what it is. Shout out to my man, Silent J, for doing the intro beat. All right, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Pierre's Panic Room. You know how we do. I always bring somebody flying, flashing. This time, there's no difference. In fact, it's next level. So I'm pretty excited about my next guest. I know y'all are, too. So let's get to it. Before I introduce him, let me read these comments y'all left in the comment section my crew got. All right. This is from the Godfrey Show. CC2709 says, I freaking love Godfrey. He cannot talk, he can, oh, he can out-talk Pierre, and that takes a lot of skill. Man, fuck, man. CC, get the fuck out of here with that boy. Yeah. It's my show, you know, my name Pierre on him. I'm gonna be talking, okay? Uh, this is from the Tony Rock Show. Uh, Delancey Parham3864 said, first off, Brother Pete, I know you have a successful career, but you are grossly underrated. Now, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff I need my crew to get me, make me feel good. Thank you, Delancey Parham, 3864. That's what I'm talking about. All right, the next one. This is from the Carlos Miller Show. Rhetoric Wolf says, Rick Ross <laughs> leaving um, was 85, 85 South's version of Birdman telling the Breakfast Club to put some respect on his name. That was wild. I mean, he got up and take, take a boo-boo, and he just kept on moving. Well, I hope my next guest ain't got the boo boo, because he, he ain't going nowhere. We, we, in fact, we ain't got no toilet. We locked the bathroom. So he ain't got no excuse where he's going right now. Y'all see him, y'all know him. He's a legendary from a legendary group. Um, let me tell you right now, I'm really happy to have him. Um, I hollered him about a year ago to come on my show, and uh, I met him from online. I've done some shows, we'll talk about that. And he hit me up and said, Yeah, I'll come through, man. And he kept his word. You know, there was times I hit him up and he was busy, but he said, I'm still going to come. I'm going to come. And today he came. So I got a lot of love for him for keeping his word to come on the show in Pierre's Panic Room. Let's give it up for the one and only Mr. Ralph Tresman. Look at the brother. Brother, I appreciate you here, man. Finally made it, right? I, that's all right, though. In fact, I decided to bring the hat out. Don't you bring yours now. I'm bringing mine out. Get that's mine it, to the side. It. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to have, have a little hat off. Well, you got the, the real deal. This is $49 from the Chinese spot. You know? Oh, this yeah. is one of them joints from the new edition show. I just kept it after one of the tours or so. And, and why wouldn't you, brother? Mm. Yeah, you, you wore it through about 35 dates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you might as well keep it down there. Yeah. I'm not going to miss it. So this I feel hit. like I'm looking up at you, man. Like, really? You? Yeah, really? Well, well, stand up then, bro. I'm not going to stand up on it, King. I know how you yeah, get that. I mean, okay. Is this, is, is this better for you, bro? You feel yeah, better no, now? You eye to eye? No, it's still, you're still up here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's wait, the wait, chair, yeah. put you on the throne. I'm, I'm, I'm 6'1", bro, okay? I got you're a long vertebrae, okay? You're on the throne. <laughs> yeah, my vertebrae long, bro. I can't start my vertebrae, my homie. Vertebrae okay, long, you good? I need making me feel like I need a high chair or something. Hell no. Somebody got a pillow for this, brother? No. Yeah, come on. Okay. You good now? Yes, You're good? All right. I still feel like that microphone too far, so we Can you hear me? I, I hear you. Sound man say he hear you. Yeah, it's all good. All right. So look here. Um, man, first of all, and I mean this sincerely, man, I want to thank you and your whole group, man, for just the longevity and staying together. I know it ain't an easy thing. I've seen the history of groups go, go and come and not be together again. And whatever you did to make it happen, to give us that music for 40-some years, brother, I want to applaud you, brother, for standing again. I mean that dead ass serious, bro. Okay? I appreciate so dead that, ass man. serious. Yeah. So we'll yeah. get into the group, but right now we're gonna talk. I like to get flowers. Start back from, from the the hood. Nigga, you from Roxbury. Nigga. We're in the hood. I, I, okay, that's the hood, man. I'm, I've been to Boston. I think what I didn't realize. I didn't realize this was real talk. That Boston was as racist as it was. Oh, well, it might still be, but you know, I done some shows in Boston and I found out. Oh, you found the, out that way. Yeah, I, I thought I thought black people was in Boston because I saw the, the the Celtics. You know, was, <laughs> I saw black was, people in Celtics. Nah. I figured, mm -hmm. man, that's the only black people in <laughs> damn near in there. They was booking you in clubs in South Boston. <laughs> what man? Come on, I did some shows. I, a couple of places I did uh, uh, some shows in Boston. The crowds were great. The mm -hmm. crowds come out show love. Mm -hmm. But I just found out that you know, whoa, P, you're watching. You know, oh, you're yeah. in Boston, brother. You know, it ain't like you think. I was like, no, wow, man, Boston's crazy. Man. I grew up being. I was in part of the force busing. You know where they okay, took you? Yeah, to them. yeah, they 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 shipped you into with your know, police uh, police motorcade brought you to school every morning. Wow, they brought what? me to school. Yeah, every morning we would meet in the black area. About fifteen buses would line up, and they would send motorcades around. There's police cars on the side, and really? motorcycles in the front. We would go up into the white 
the right, right hood right. and go to their schools, man. So the, and it was happening vice versa. I didn't notice. Am I keeping this mic? I didn't notice till later when I was talking to Donnie Wahlberg, who's from the right. uh, he's from the area where they shipped him into where we from. Okay. You know, I didn't know that okay. they was doing force busting in, in reverse as well. So but yeah, I, I it's crazy. Know, I didn't know that. Um, I drove past mm. a park that had, had it was gated and it said Roxbury. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know Roxbury very well. I don't know which gate that might be. Oh, it's like, uh, but it's around a park. Mm hmm. Orchard Park. It if might be Orchard Park. Been, that. Y'all been, Orchard Park was, that's where we grew up at. So you, y'all performed over there? Yeah, that's where we started all this mess up at, man. You know, wow. Going wow. to each other's houses, right? Right in that little area you talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I rode around. They were like, yeah, no addition was wrong. I was like, oh, shit, I see the little signs at Rockbury. Okay, cool. And we got the hell back out of there. You yeah, know, before yeah, you it know. get too dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. I had, to go, I had to go in town. I understand. But, um, but beautiful. Okay, so you, you had a, your mother and father lived, you, you grew up with your mother and father? Yeah, they both were in the house. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then you had a brother and sister, if I'm not mistaken? Latanya and right. Andre, yeah. Okay, okay. Did you hear a lot of music in the house? Is that how you started hearing, getting into music? Or how did that come out? Yeah, all the family gatherings, there was music. If there was my uncles and grandma, you know, whoever came by. My grandmother come by, she wanted my mother to play the Supremes. And mm -hmm. they would sit down for hours just drinking their little beer. And, right, right, sure. And telling, Supreme, or telling stories from back in the days with that in the background. But yeah, when my uncles came by and they was playing cards and doing that whole right, thing, sure, and, sure, you know, sure. like like black folks did. Did, did you? Um, yeah, it was music. Like besides, New, uh, I mean, New, um, Jackson Five. Who were some of the people you liked musically when you were growing up? Like trying to imitate. I, I, you know, honestly, if you just think of the whole, the whole Motown catalog, basically okay. was the theme in the house. That's okay. Well, in, the, in in Orchard Park, I would say in the hood in general, that was the that was the dominant sound. So anything from Marvin Gaye to Smokey Robinson to right. the Jacksons and right. any, all the stuff that um, the Temptations and um, Norman Whitfield was producing over nice. there. Oh yeah, oh Norman yeah. Victor. Yeah, all yeah. the stuff oh, yeah. that he was doing over there. It's like all that stuff was in our house. Rose Voice and all them, and all Absolutely. that stuff. Wow, so, nice. Okay, yeah. so that, that, that that's nice. That's nice. Let me ask you. Okay, first of all, what age did you leave out of Roxbury? Like, what age did you actually leave? I think the how we actually left it probably was around. 17 or so 17 maybe going on 18. okay and you moved to where when you when you left moved to california okay so you was okay you was going i'm gonna tell you a moment that i remember and i know you remember it but you weren't there at the mm -hmm. time remember charles stewart charles stewart come on bro let me break it down for, for those who don't know it was a white boy who was married to this white this, he had a white wife she was pregnant and they were going to like a lamaze class in roxbury uh -huh. he was trying to get a, his insurance he, from his wife yeah, and he I killed her right now, yeah he killed and he blamed it on a black a black it's boy black, from roxbury yeah, he used right. it because of the racism that's he said right. a black man did shot and killed he shot himself too yeah, and yeah. he shot her and killed her but he shot himself to make it seem like it was a robbery i would have never remembered that name but yeah charles stewart yep but well yeah, it was all in the news and i remember he and he did some lamaze class in roxbury mm -hmm. and leaving there and so he said hey i'm he said it was all a setup yeah. to use Roxbury being black. Yeah, that hard I body, yeah. kill me. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that, that but somebody was They have 89, so you was 21 years old. You've been gone by that time already. That's right. Yeah, I was yeah. Already out of there, but I do remember that. that that's story. The, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a heavy situation, man. Yeah, it was. It was crazy because he almost got away with it for a second. Come on now. They was believing everything. See, there you go. Said. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he almost got away with it. Pretty much got away with it. And Until, his brother snitched on him. Exactly. His Until brother snitched on him. Said, "No, man, ain't what happened." And then he went to jail, and then he, he committed suicide. He jumped off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, whack ass, that yeah. Crazy. But it just shows how easy white folks can say, black man did it, and everyone, that's, this is 89, you know, he's still doing it nowadays, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, boy's life would have been over. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Just because he Willie said Bennett, that. his name was Willie Bennett. Willie Bennett. Yeah, his brother Willie been Bennett, over. man. Yeah, man, so. Into, yeah. So I can imagine the fear, you know, people were scared around no, that time, tough, but you man. were gone, yeah. No, it was tough, even when the time I was there, it was it was just as crazy. You knew, you knew where to go and where to hang and when to be back out of there before, the, you know, it got crazy. Right, yeah. now when you were living there, it was, it was gangs there? Not so much gangs in that respect, you okay. know, like, the, you know, the Bloods and the Crips per right. se, but there was territories where this was the such the and orchard such. Tarp, orchard Park trail blazers. And there are the, the blazers now. Come on, now. brother. Come on, man. <laughs> Look at you. You know what it is now. The OP is about the blazers okay, now. Okay, chill. Chill, then, white. Okay. Back All them then, there. Nobody there, wasn't yeah. doing it. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It was just Orchard Park, and then you had Ruggles Projects, and right, you had right. cathedrals, and it was just about where you was from, and there wasn't no particular, okay. you know, like gang or name, like the Warriors or right, something like right, that Right, right, right. You just was from... You know, Roxbury, or you was from Orchard Park, or you was from such and such, and that's, okay. how, that's how it went down. Now, now, unfortunately, I was, I was busy working on the road myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to watch that 10-part series, but I heard it was dope, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people loved it, you know, every aspect. So I may ask a question that was answered there. I asked some people who asked me some, some questions answered about the movie. Mm -hmm. So so 
Oh, excuse me. I can't ask him 5,000 questions, all right? Damn y'all. So I'm not going to say, why aren't you asking my dad? Why aren't you asking my dad? I'm going to do the best we're going to do. We're going to talk about something a little different that maybe you ain't heard about you know, before. So we're going to go with that. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so we, we're, um, we're young then. You're 12 years old. I, uh, I hear, you know, you were singing in another little group or something like that. And then it's, Ricky and myself uh, was doing a little something as Ricky and Ralph. But it mm-hmm. wasn't really a group. and We weren't really doing anything serious. It was something we were dipping down in the way. Right. But, um, yeah, there was no other little group. We just was in Orchard Park trying to figure it out. Me and Ricky hung together a lot. And as the story goes, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike had um, tried to start a group like that prior to New Edition. So mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. probably the story that we're mm-hmm. talking about. Mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. Prior to New Edition, there was a New Edition, named New Edition, was, but okay. it had different members. And okay. then eventually... Uh, they never did any shows and never went anywhere with it. They kind of let it fall apart. Okay. About a year or so later, sometime after, uh, they decided to, to put it back together. At that point, me and Ricky were hanging, and so I just slid in as Ricky said. I know somebody that could be, you know, right, that likes to do this right. type of stuff too. He sings and whatever. So we jumped in, and the four of us started moving around trying to trying right, to get trying it started, to right, yeah, right. see what we can do. Yeah. And then y'all would sing anywhere y'all could sing, you know, just get together and just yeah. go somewhere, sing at a park and all that. Is that the kind of It was of usually system? in people's houses. No, we didn't okay. really sing in the parks a lot. It was either mm-hmm. at one of our houses early on, we okay. would switch up depending on whose mom was, was, wasn't was right. fed up with it. Uh, and then we would, um, we like the boys clubs. I remember the Salvation Army Boys Club and with Cathedral Projects. Mm-hmm. We were going there a lot toward the middle of the end. And it would be, eventually we was doing, um, this, you know, Travis, our manager at the time, Mari Starr, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, their mm-hmm. places, they had studio spaces where we can go and rehearse and right, practice. Right. But when you do that, when you have a group like that, how do you pick who does the leads? Do the producers do that? Like, I want to sing this lead, I'll sing So it's the best at whatever, you know? But yeah, but y- all y'all might think y'all the best, you know? Come on. Yeah, it comes Bobby out. felt he was the best sometimes, and you yeah. done, and Ricky and said, hold some, up now. And on certain things, he is. No, I'm so saying when y'all younger. When we're young, it was the same thing. Like okay. Back then, we actually, yeah, I think early on, what you're talking about is um, trying to do that the the Jackson thing. Once okay. we got around Maury Star, he saw us at his talent show and all right, that stuff. Right. It became a pursuit for him to let me get this group and produce right. a group with that Jackson Five ish sound, uh, Jackson Jackson Five ish sound, right? So mm-hmm. sound. Well, I'm trying to get out. It's all good. Long story it. short, that sound became something that I could carry the lead on the best out okay. of the group. So when we started doing the Candy Girl album, most of the records on that album fit what Mari Starr's vision was, right. and my voice fit being in the lead part. You see, like Ricky was the Jermaine at the time. Right, I get what you're saying. You know, somebody else was the talker in the group, what, the romancer. Was it a thing if y'all were just happy to be someone picking you up to take you somewhere because I heard you know, contracts weren't really done correctly and all this kind of stuff. Is it like saying, I just, man, we just want to get out of here and just sing. Somebody says, you the next ones, and you were just easily led? No, not really. Not really? No, it was a lot of um, trying to think, you know, like businessmen, trying to put ourselves in where our parents and somebody was always involved, trying to make okay, sure we didn't, because right. we heard the stories. Okay, right, right. How easy right. it is everybody get taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. So we was trying, to, we was trying our best to, to prevent it, but, you know, the game was different back then. Okay. So... Some of the stuff became, let's just get out here and make some noise. There you go. And then we'll figure it out from right. there if we can. But a lot of times New Edition was um, signing stuff that, we, even though we had it looked at by everybody we thought we trusted, it still didn't say what we thought it said. Okay. So there was a lot of things we signed that was like that. Then what would you tell a young artist today? I know it's different, but mm-hmm. could you give them any idea of these young artists and they starting a group? What would you give them? What kind of main advice you'd give them? Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, one of the main things, if you're going to really do it, is be serious about it and be prepared for the roller coaster. Some ups okay. and some downs. And everything, everything is not going to be um, what you want it to be all the time. You right. Know? You get some success. Don't let them pull you apart from whatever started you. You know, that, it's, right. like, it's like the whatever that main core thing that – that's the real meat and right. uh, bread and butter of it all, the real meat and potato, right? Don't let that slide. And that's what New Edition kind of, what we pride ourselves on. You know, mm-hmm. the meat and potato of it all, we can try all this other stuff. But we have a hostess. You know, there's Twinkies and there's fruit right, pies. Right, and there's, right, right. But as, the, as New Edition, but, but we I should feel, always protect that. Right. I feel like, though, in the record industry, it's just devils. I mean, I, slave, what is It's different what, now. What, uh, huh? It's different Okay, now. but back then, like, I feel like, why would you just go rip off a young artist? Like, I'd rather keep you happy and make money off you, opposed to pimp you. It just, 
I feel like the record industry was just a it's a horrible it's place, the, it man. Is, man. That's this is where we get into, right? With what I'm yeah. trying to say, it's like hard to give advice to something that if I if I'd known different, right? Sure. I'd have stayed in school. I'd have became that rocket science or something that scientist or really? something. I'd have did something else, man. To be honest with you, it wouldn't have been if I'd have known what I know right now. Nah, right. Really, what the hustle was gonna be? That was a lot of work. Yeah, I, I can believe it, brother. A lot, a lot of going into I, I all the little nooks and crannies. The reason why New Edition and Robert Tresvan and Bobby Brown and Bell Biv DeVoe and Johnny Gill and all of the stuff that make up New Edition can go do all of these things consistently. Right with or without each other is because we take the same approach whether it's solo stuff or outside of it and we go into all the little nooks and crannies we're in people's households for real because there's something that we're a part of and we're sure since day one sure we make sure we're a part of that's part of their community it feel like people understand new additions down there with them from the same mm-hmm. upbringing and try as much as we can whether it's as individuals or as a group right to 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 to, to pretty much put put eyes on a lot of different situations sure. that we go through as you know as people or that's something that might help it or render it so that's one of the things with the group always being in touch in right. a real way with folks that allowed you to be able to stick around longer because in between records and when it ain't funny it's like well i just saw a new edition they was at the school with my daughters and the they homie, gave away right. some you right know what i'm saying right they, right, they helped right. with some backpack or they did some this or whatever it might be right. that's the stuff that in between all of the hoopla I don't know, keeps you a part of the Come people, on. people's lives and that's what i would say if you want to get into this or anything you get into make sure you understand that the people you're adding values to right is uh, you know that you're staying in touch with them I, I appreciate it okay let's go back i remember i'm in a car with my father mm-hmm. and we're driving and i'm like damn jackson five releasing an old song <laughs> andy girl i hear that I, I had no idea, you know, right. the, the, I, I, it had to be, I'm, I'm guessing like maybe 83, I was about 15 years old. I'm like, what the, I thought it was, new, I thought it was Michael Jackson, I thought it was new, I mean, what right. you Jackson 5. How did you feel about the comparison, you know, because that was, that was strong. Were you okay like, with it? I felt like it's working. Man, that's oh, what we okay. were trying to do, It's coming out the gate trying to be the new or having people right. compare you to that. Uh, hey, listen, and that's what they were saying. Oh my God, that record is mad. I thought that was Michael Jackson. And the Man, well, like, here we go. We, without we a doubt. And that was such a life changer from, from being in the rock in rock bay, whatever, growing up, whatever it is. Yeah. And then that out, that you know, that's a it was a mega hit. Yeah, it was. I mean, I saw I lost a girlfriend to you, homie. That's I ain't appreciate that. Like, you know, I want to tell you that's why I got you on the show, just to tell you that's some bullshit, okay? Oh, here we go. That okay, was that a setup. No, yeah, that's what it is, the setup, <laughs> God, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> damn you, girl. No, I, I, I got Bobby. I got mean, Bobby. I got Ralph Trabman on the couch. So damn you, girl. See? Yeah. Shit. But no, man, it was such Bobby a. Bobby probably took one too. <laughs> yeah, he probably did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all was terrible. Y'all no, it was wasn't. Yeah. Damn that. Okay. Okay. Whatever. You got you. Okay. I remember. I tell you where I saw you perform at the first Believe time. Believe him, Mo. <laughs> okay. I believe. <laughs> I believe. I'm tell you where I first saw you perform at. Let me see how good your memory is. Mm-hmm. It's in Washington D.C., July mm-hmm. 4th. It was opening up Ooh. for the, hold on. What do you call them? The Beach Boys on the front lawn. Come, uh, come on, son. Yeah. I was in the. I was one of fifteen thousand. I'm a candy girl. Oh my god. No, I'm kind of hating y'all. Like, fuck them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I got my shit. My, I got a couple girls. That's with me. hilarious. You remember that? For the Beach Boys, brother, you was opening for the Beach Boys. Sure did. And then they blew up some fireworks right after come, the Beach come, Boys. Man, I, I remember like, seeing all the people out there on the lawn. Huh? Yeah, I remember the outfits we wore. Yeah. We, pur- we had this purple shiny uh-huh. type of thing on, uh-huh. like. Like a waiter stopped. Come on now, come on now. With some white pants and white shoes. I remember, Cause I saw some, not that's the footage, wild. I think it was footage or the video of that not that long ago. That's Really? That's why, that's why you remember it? Yeah, I remember seeing Bobby was up there singing Mr. Telephone Man. And okay. just looking at all of these people out there on yeah. the lawn, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Every July 4th, they would bring like the, the, the Beach Boys would do the act. You know, yeah. But they would bring a go-go band and some, some other up-and-coming yeah. people. Yeah, I remember seeing New Edition for the you first sure time. You did. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was one of them dudes in the audience. Now, look at that. That was probably, at the time, if if it's still up, it might be the number one with one of them, the largest audiences you ever performed. Come, yeah, without a doubt. Because it was how many people supposed to be out there on that long? That could be 40,000 people, bro. Easily, right? Yeah, easily, easily 40,000 people. And yeah, it was free, too. That's why niggas look right. all up in there. Free. Okay. But, <laughs> but no, that, that, no that, that was the first time I, um, yeah, the first time I saw you. Um, all right, let me ask you a question. Um, I don't know how, you know, how your money flow, but at what point, what was the first biggest thing you bought when you got, when you, whenever you got some money, what was one of the first things first you really biggest thing I remember buying? Yeah. <clears throat> it was between either um, a moped or a waterbed. 
Hell no. That was my thing right really? then to get one of them water what bags. Of course, they had of the course. Head behind Come on them. now, you know It's what like man? I'm coming up. You right. had one of them, you was coming up. Right, right. The water, so the really a water bed. That was a water <laughs> bed right. and a moped, man. Those are the two first things I really remember. Buying. That's so funny. I'm, I'm talking about stuff that's like back in the 80s sometimes, but it's because you look still young, you still look the same. First of all, thank you for looking the same. <laughs> I ain't want <laughs> shit. You know, you yeah, know what, what the gonna... fuck is, is that you? Shit? I go, I go to class reunions. I graduated '85. Some girls come to me, "How you doing?" Like, oh, who is you? Who is you? All I recognize is this right here: the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Right. The rest of it I don't recognize. So no disrespect, but there it is, man. Now nah, yeah. that's good. No, so you got a, a water bed was the first thing you did. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let's. Uh, so let me ask you. Um, so y'all started touring. It was it was pandemonium. I could see some of the videos, man. It, it's just I, I can't even. How did it feel, man? The, the girls just scream. Cause as a young boy, you want the girls to scream, but it got out of hand. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Beatles. Y'all were like the Beatles, okay? The mm -hmm. Black Beatles, okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when that happens to you, I understand it's exciting, but it could be scary. Who controlled that? I mean, I mean, did you not know control yourself? No, it's nothing. That you can't really control that. You even stand out of areas where you can cause that kind of commotion, <clears throat> cause something like that to take place. But that's eventually that's what happens. You just not you're not getting out there and doing stuff where there's a lot of people. But yeah, initially it was you didn't know. Right. So you're going to school and you're doing a regular thing, and next thing you know, you're coming out to go to your next class, and you got twenty people following you to the next <laughs> oh, class, man. and you're trying to figure out what's going on, and they pointing and snickering. You get in the class, they're doing this throughout school for the first, when it's first starting to hit, Candy Girl's starting to buzz. Right. And, you know, it's starting to hit people that that's who they was talking about, and you start seeing all that happening too. Eventually you're somewhere and <laughs> running through the school, some, end up somewhere in the auditorium on top of a speaker with yeah. hundreds of little girls sitting around right. like they're getting ready to shake the speaker Sure. Down. Yeah, sent me home with a lock of my hair missing one day from my fro. My mother. That's when it was over for my mother. Really? Yeah, she was like, no, this is not going to happen. We got to do something else. You, My boy coming home with locks of his hair missing now. What's happening? Y'all are not protecting them or whatever. So I literally got a security guard that would come to school with me. What? Yeah, he would sit in, sit in class. And when, when we um, get ready to take off, First, he would, he would walk me to the class. So I could squeeze through people like that because he looked a little bit more official for a second. Right. Then that got old, and they were just bum rushing him like he was nothing. So they had two, they had three bells. They had a warning bell. Then I had a Ralph Tresvant file bell. No, sir, bell, don't do that. And then they had the rest of the you school. You had your own bell? <laughs> yeah, I had my own bell, baby. I love it. You go, you coming up when you got your own hey, bell. Oh, 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 without a doubt. Now, you didn't go to school uh, with none of the other guys? We and Ricky went to, yeah, we went to middle school together for a while. But that wasn't when the, that was when the, the, the song was out, right? No. In high school? Mm, no, they were just coming. They were, were just, just coming. coming. Around high school, it was okay. just coming. At that point, everybody was in different schools by high school. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, so let me. So now mm. you're hot. The, 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 the record just had about four or five major hits on it, you know. Mm. Um, um, did you at that time, did, did you always know that Bobby might not be around? <laughs> you can. Bobby <laughs> always was like there was something about New Edition that was just too. He wasn't representing them, letting them represent the full Bobby, basically. Bobby, yeah, okay. it was real confined. Right, right, confined. Right. And we all had that side to us, but we understood that this is working. This is getting out there, man. We need to you know, hold on to it. Right, Bobby right, was right. a little bit less like, you know. Right. We started doing all kind of wild stuff that fit Bobby and his image. He wanted to put out the kind of music that we listened to and we came with and the people around the way that we right. come from listen to. He wanted to be that dude for the block, so. But you, did you know he was that, in, that kind of personality when y'all brought him into the group? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, we knew he was that type of dude. Okay. Bobby was running around the projects in the summertime with leather pants on and sticking his pants, like, you know, coming up to the other kids. Like, get them, get them. Get, right, you know, right, get, right, yeah, right. Yeah, so y'all knew what it was when y'all got really him? really doing that as a little boy. Huh? We wow. All, we all had moments where we did our wild stuff, so it wasn't like Bobby was out. That's the projects. We all had people and friends in our cliques. That did, no, I get he that. He was literally, after a while, New edition is holding them back. But what, but what you said, or, no, what you just said, you got other four, three, y'all mm -hmm. knew what to do. Y'all like, we're we going to keep this rolling. Mm -hmm. He was so wild, like, damn, the, the successful stuff, I'm going to try my own shit. That's major at that time to leave a successful group. Yeah. You guys knew the business of saying, this is working, mm -hmm. let's milk this longer, That's you know right. what I'm saying? 
Yeah, it takes a lot of nuts to do. It, it sure does. Yeah, and when when he and when he, when he took his two nuts out the group, mm -hmm. how did you uh how did y'all take it? Was you a little a little? I just pump, I just pumped my nuts up. Oh, but there they that damn nuts for nuts and That's shit, it. right? We kept it moving. Damn. Yeah. That's okay. All I, I did y'all y'all nutty in that group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, That's a part of the success. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> did um, what was it a certain type of relief when he left? Let's be honest. You know, no, say, it wasn't. At first, it was kind of scary. First okay. feeling is that, man, people are used to seeing us the way they saw us. Mm -hmm. You know, is this going to be something that puts this disdain on the group right. or whatever? You know, you don't know what it's going to do. You feel bad that you might leave your homie. If mm -hmm. that stuff, that whatever he's trying to do don't mm -hmm. work out, mm -hmm. you know, there's all kind of emotions about it. Um, at the end of the day, when, you, when you're coming out, out the gate, you, you know, the team you start with is the one you think you're gonna right, win sure. with. You know, you're gonna sure. keep you starting to win with. You figure that's how you're gonna cross the finish line. So when that started happening, it was just a lot of stuff that just wasn't the plan. You know? Right, yeah, right, right. I can see it being be nerve wracking like. because you guys again consistently thinking keep the group stay yeah. steady. This is working. We we got hits. Let's move. So he goes away. Um, I don't remember the timeline. He put an album out before y'all put y'all next, the Heartbreak, Heartbreak album, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you see his success, how did that make you feel? And we're in the panic room, nigga. Be well, you know, it was kind of weird because the first album that he put out didn't really do much. That's sure enough, right? Like yeah. Janet Jackson's first album. The King of Stage one. album okay. had hits and stuff we loved, and I thought it was a smash album. I was mm -hmm. real proud of him. Mm -hmm. You know, the King of Stage being one of my favorite joints on the album. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know if the imagery, something didn't connect, right. the promotion, the way it was pu pushing them, or was whatever, something didn't connect with that album. Girlfriend came off there and it was a pretty good single for him. Right, so I remember that one. That mm -hmm. worked out, and the rest of it, and he came out, he had the Larry Blackman jock strap yeah, come on. Come on, come on. They had the thing, matching straps. Yeah, yeah. That, became, yeah. <laughs> that became something that I don't think it hit the, it didn't hit the block, like, you right. know. So coming into the next album, it was more of a, but let me ask you, when it's not been successful as you think, do you think like you need to come back, homie, or you done fucked no, up leaving? Not at all. Really? I don't think any of that. He was okay. Bobby was in his, Bobby had the opportunity to come back before he even started the first album. Okay. It's like, yo, if you really want to push the issue, you know, that's my guy. Let's go. You know, I'll go to bat, we going in there. And they right. Get, they ain't getting another album, at least not like the one they think they're gonna make money with. Right. So, um, he said, Nah, man, I'm good. I wanna do this. I really wanna try this. So I all right. Yeah, y'all better than me, because I got an ego, bro. I'd be like, man, come on, son. Come on back. This ain't working for you over there. This, this, this ain't right, man. But OK, y'all y'all different. Roxbury, you know, I'm from DC, so we're different. Listen, different. Man, work all, right, all right, let me ask you. So when y'all got, OK, I'm from DC. So I remember mm -hmm. Stacy Ladder saw on a guy named Johnny Gill. Okay? Right. So Johnny Gill was popular in DC. You know, mm -hmm. he had a strong voice. Who makes the selection of picking him? And how did you feel when they picked him? The selection was made to bring Johnny in the group Around the time when I was in Boston working on solo music. It wasn't really solo for a solo project per se, it was just mm -hmm. solo music. I was okay. a guy with a friend of mine named Dwayne Omar, and we started working on music. Whatever it was going to be for me, we was going to start to becoming a production team. Mm -hmm. and we was talking about being a production team, Silver and Gold, or something was calling it back then, records. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Somehow this comes to the group that I'm leaving, and supposed to be doing all this other stuff so they started trying to figure out how do they go forward from here if that is the case whether it was real or not mm -hmm. and so they started talking to Johnny Gill I think that was by all of them management was doing that Michael my oh my oh, my, oh Michael group okay. members themselves doing that between Ricky Michael and Johnny I mean Rick, Ricky Michael and and Ronnie these are the conversations they were having and mm -hmm. they could have been talking to um, some of the management people at the time I right don't know, but I don't I was thinking you might be leaving Right. right, wow. I'm under the assumption that that's what's happened. But, you know, they never had the conversation with me first. They never talked to me. I never right. really think anything about it. Right. I show up to do the Heartbreak album in Minneapolis mm -hmm. with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Lewis. Right. And that's the first time I saw Johnny Gill as supposedly a new edition member. Right. So I had never heard anything about it. So they can feel it. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was like, of course. they're <laughs> trying to cut records. They're trying to get us to focus on what type of records we want to do and whatever and I'm like but it was thick up, it was thick up in there yeah, it was, they pulled us to the <laughs> side and just say hey man what's going on we can feel this what's, right what's right the sure and you know he couldn't stay he couldn't ask us fast enough so I'll tell you the problem I don't know what, what's going on I don't even know why Johnny why this why, one, like, right. cool. hey, what you doing so here homie What's happening? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like y'all never told Ralph Johnny's and this is they was just a stunt. Wow. The whole room is like yeah. Right. Like, now we're all figuring this out for the first time right now baby. So. Why? 
that's how Johnny came in the group from my perspective. Let me ask you, it was was anybody else name, you know, flying around, floating around? Not that know? I know of. Well, you didn't know shit. You didn't know Johnny was floating no, around. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I can see Elder Bar. I didn't even in retro hear anything that they, yeah, we was thinking about. I'll be sure with y'all. Yeah, so not the, no, <laughs> wouldn't think about that. I'll be sure it's too <laughs> tall. <laughs> wow. Is that what it is? Y'all the hype requirement? Like He's too tall for us, man. That's he funny. Make everybody look like shrimps. Okay, so once the album, the Heartbreak, Heartbreak album comes out and it becomes so successful, mm -hmm. did you feel like, okay, this is, this is vindicated? It worked. You know, or did you know when it was going to work while y'all were recording? Or did you say when it came out, like, damn. I'm cool with Johnny now. This is working. I felt like we had hits when we were recording. Okay. I felt like, okay, this is a nice little return for new edition. Some mm -hmm. of the records really was that. Not, and, I, and at the same time, I was listening to Guy's new album about to drop. I'm mm -hmm. listening to the Prerogative album, the Don't Be Crew album. I'm mm -hmm. listening to these, this other style that's getting ready, that's already kind of warming up in the streets sure. already, but they about to drop them in a real way. With the Guy album, Bobby's... Mm -hmm. Don't Be Cruel album. It was Keep Sweat was coming with some more stuff. It was just mm -hmm. a, a little army of Teddy Riley and this sure. style that was about to hit the scene. That right, right. I felt like we we was we should have had some of that on there with it. If we would have had a little bit of that with us, we could have kept a little bit more on the heart on on, on heartbreak, heartbreak album. Yeah, really? heartbreak album was a little more traditional, grown up, grown. You know, right. It, it was different from your first there album. There was no now. street reflection, like we're yeah. saying. If you think about the Don't Be Cool album, oh, I the see what Poison you're album, that was what we ended up doing as individuals yeah, to I get, get that style out. That wasn't on that album. More street, okay, okay. A little bit more of that in there. I think we would have been, we'd have just kind of like laced ourselves with growing up with some of those songs, bringing Johnny in, maturing the sound, um, not just for the radio, but the clubs and the whole thing. Right, this is right. not a club record, radio. You know? Right, I mean, right. Club record type group, you know. Being that it was successful, okay. Um, when you decided to leave, I think you decided to leave because everyone else started to leave because you really didn't want to leave. Am I mistaken? Mm -mm, that's and, true. That's true. And you just basically said, well, all right, y'all gone, then I got to make something happen for myself. Yeah. If and I that's gonna, why you left because of that exactly. more. Exactly. Eventually when everybody started working on their own projects, uh -huh. so I'm just sitting still. And this could get ugly. This could turn into, well, when do I work again? I know that's right. When do I do something again to make sure I can feed my family? If everybody's running around doing stuff, let and it took a long time too, between the six. Bobby went out there sold millions of records. BBD right, sold sure. millions of records. Johnny mm -hmm. sold millions of records, and I've luckily I got out there and sold me a few millions myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, watching all that going, you don't know when the next thing is going to happen. So I had to take take advantage of, you know, right. running around as a right. solo artist, just so I ain't the only one sitting around. But I didn't want to do it, so let me take advantage of it since right. it might be a while. Well, it was a huge, that, that, your first album, Ralph Transman album, that sold two million copies. That's beautiful. And the, the lead sensitivity, sensitive, sensitivity. That, that song there, let me ask you. <laughs> are, you are you fine with being known as a sex symbol? Sex symbol. Because, you know, that always, I don't even know if that's always what it's been. I just always, like, he's cute. Mm -hmm. He's handsome. To, mm -hmm. You know, as you get older, you hear those things. But the sex symbol thing, man, I never even thought twice about it. It's just. And that's, Oh, I say that because that sensitive song, you know, real right. niggas didn't give a fuck about that damn song. You're like, oh, nah. that bullshit. You went to, that's to the ladies until and shit, nigga. They, until they's with their lady. Yeah, yeah. but then I'm like, I, you know, I can't minutes. play that in the car with niggas with my niggas and yeah, shit. Yeah, you ain't for, every song ain't for that. Right, okay, right, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you was kind of pushing toward the lay -lays. You know, you're such a gentleman. That's what the album was about. Yeah. And that's why, like, you had Bobby on that song. On the sensitivity or no, Stone no, Cold Gentleman? No, yeah, so, I'm sorry, Stone Cold Gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bobby Brown. So it showed that y'all still could work together, you know, so it wasn't a beef. That no. people thought it was because you know, sometimes no, when people when people break up, they think it's a problem. No, so beef. Bobby wanted to go, so he wanted to do his own thing. Right. You know? He wanted right. to give it a try. These are the record company was coming to him, saying, right. "Man, listen, sure, what you want to do? We'll give it a shot." They saw him. They knew that that little knucklehead attitude right. from around the way was gonna appealing sell. to everybody. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah, like yeah. that's what he, that's what people are being. It's, it, that guy is being exposed right now, and people are loving him right. with the hip hop and the rap and all that. So Bobby coming out. Kind of the singing version of that was um, was genius. So okay. they stepped to him about it, and he made it happen. Well, well, I'm gonna tell you something. So I went on tour with you guys. Uh, we did a couple of dates um, on the Home Again uh, yeah. tour, and I'm gonna tell you something was interesting. Again, I wasn't. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dude, so I ain't. You know, the ladies loved y'all more. You know, I respected y'all. I liked y'all, but I ain't about to <laughs> cheer and scream for y'all in the front row. And, you know, you know. I hope I mean, not. Honestly. Yeah, you know how we do. Um, I tell you what, I noticed, man. What? If Bobby wasn't there, that people was pissed the fuck off. <laughs> if Bobby wasn't there, I didn't I didn't realize how much of an impact he had 
Do you remember that? You remember that? He brought Whitney out sometime with the baby and shit. Oh, this was after the Don't Be Cruel success and all that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like 98. I expecting that. It was the same way this tour. We just did a tour to sold out almost 90-something percent of it. I saw it. And the same well, thing. I saw it online. If he doesn't come, it's just like a letdown in the building, man. Everybody, That's... they want to see everybody do all of that stuff, man. You know, it's like the yeah. Jacksons and... Yeah. You don't see Michael or something. It's like, okay, I didn't get my full experience tonight. Mm. But, but, yeah, I, you know, you know, yeah. I, I think y'all, yeah, yeah, it works together as New Edition. When you take too many parts out, it doesn't feel the same to me. I went to see The Temptations some years ago, and I don't know who it was, but the guy who'd only sing the most had the group. And everybody else was, was new, and it was him. Mm -hmm. And that would be like, and I'm not being, but I'd be like, if Ronnie DeVoe, it was the only guy and five other people with new edition. I'm mm -hmm. like, where's the rest of the group? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Or whoever, you know what I'm saying? No, I get it. The guy who ain't the most popular leading person I out there. I promise you, I know exactly. I went to see the Shy Lights and the yeah, you know Delphonics or something like right, that. Right, right, right. It was like some of them the Stylistics, Delphonics, and, and, and the Shy Lights. And, and three of the guys was in three of the groups. Right. Uh, ain't that a bottle <laughs> bitch? Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yeah. Right, it's a mixture. Could a uh, new edition tour ever happen without all the members? Well, not all the members, a, a, new, a new member for just to make, you know what I'm saying, put in there. Uh, listen, now, as of right now, I don't think so. I don't think so. We're not looking at it that, like there's a way to, to try to go out here and keep it all going with the new edition review. Right, right, and, right. Uh, new edition, you know, nah, we might do like a, a play, something where it's like somebody does the story on right, right, and a Supremes kind of on, or you know, whatever right. the story was. I think it was the Supreme story on Broadway, but either way, we talked about those kind of things to keep it going, but not us with Bobby having his version of the right. group, and right, 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 Johnny having his version, me having his that. Now we've kind of protected that in the paperwork Beautiful. that we have that we signed. We don't. So, so it, it won't be a new member to make new addition go on the road again it's going to be i'd rather just be one member missing and the rest of y'all just do what y'all got to do oh yeah absolutely okay that's my okay that, 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 that's what i can re, i could definitely respect that yeah, but absolutely. yeah i remember being on that tour man that was a heck of a tour man and y'all were only supposed to sing y'all hook or whatever a verse or something each couple of y'all songs and bobby said i'm singing all my shit, the whole yeah. damn song I, don't know I was there, done. brother, in the back. Bobby's done a bunch of stuff like that on tour, man. Oh, brother. <laughs> One of the times that tour that you talk, that same tour you're talking yeah. about. He, um, he I didn't came do all the to dates. the show. Something, him and Whitney came in. Uh -huh. The show was over. Uh -huh. He was supposed to be a part, even though it was an intertwined show where we do our new edition right. stuff and the solo stuff in, right. mm -hmm. in the midst of the same show. But they didn't get in the city or into the town until late or something happened. Mm -hmm. Whatever they did, the show was over. At about, it, was about, it was about 11 30, almost right. 12. The show was over. People right. were leaving. And they show up with all the lights on in the building, got on stage, Come and on. performed the whole show from about 12 to, I'd say, about about 1.30, right, 2 right. o'clock. If you were turned around, they were leaving. Like, what the? Whitney? Turned yeah, around yeah, with no yeah, lights, yeah. no nothing. Just I heard about that. The mic. You there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really, I wasn't there, but I heard really about happened. that. We were sitting there like, this This is happening right now. <laughs> is it the point where you got to accept a Bobby Brown? Like, this is what he is. This is what it is. <laughs> Fuck it, you know. And yeah, even though it could piss you off or it's not on, you know, on time, it's like, this is what it is. I have no idea. You have no idea? Okay, okay. I don't know. I mean, okay. you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's just how it's always been for us. We, that's just how he's always been. We know it, right. we, ha, we know each member is in their thing that might get on your nerve or mm -hmm. something about them. Or they, everybody has that. So. Um, but your professionalism, you think that came from your parents? My, Growing up? Uh, I've, yeah, more than likely. Just you know, watching the, them having to be respectful and them, you know, teaching you to be respectful and right. stuff like that. I think that, the, right. yeah. That's and and the seeing, like, I don't know how much of a risk taker you are, you know, like mm -hmm. you said, you didn't even want to leave the group, but you did out, you know, because you, you had to, everybody split up. You know, um, are you not that kind of person, like fearless to, to, to push the envelope? Like, you know, like that's not who you no, are. I can, but it's like this, when it comes to what I'm pushing, you know, the, the music industry was something that I just was having fun doing. Okay. With some guys I was hanging out with, that mm -hmm. was my boy. So as it exploded, it was not. It wasn't something that I chose to 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 make a big deal out of because right. it was never a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. It was a great way to feed my family, is get mm -hmm. my mom and them out the projects. It was those kind of things that I was I was appreciating about it. But being a star, a celebrity, trying to be outdo the next person out there, just, I just don't have that type of family. Yeah. You, and you didn't, as a group, y'all didn't have, like try to outdo Guy and all the other groups of coming you know, after, <laughs> nah, you know, with y'all? Nah, not at all. When we was coming up, we just felt like what we were putting together, how we were moving, the um, the way that we uh, double-checked everything and just looked over ourselves and every aspect from how you dress, how you, mm -hmm. the, what the different members' health conditions are, mm -hmm. our, you know, to the records we put out, the 
everything we looked at it like oh, when you do it this way it's, and it, can't nobody touch us mm-hmm. you know there ain't nobody messing with us we're in our own lane put it that way right i feel you. everybody has a lane new edition has a lane that's completely their own and we don't have to worry about competing with nobody well you know would, would you admit that a lot of people have come after you trying to duplicate duplicate you guys not thing? really Really? You, you I don't, don't think, think there's a lot of... Mari I mean, Stark would like grab everybody. When I think about some of the artists who've come out, like the new kids on the block, and these are... So these for are, real, all these that. These are friends of ours. Those are people who are in camps that we, you know, we're close with them. Right. You know, that Andre Herrera, Uptown, Heavy D, and all that's where they came out of. Um, Ram, Danny, Dice. So those are some of the cats that when we was... they, You know, they, they we were all looking for some more artists to stay out on the group level. You know, because okay. like around that time, it was winning. But I think, like, yeah, you, you have people who, who looked at New Edition's career and the solo careers and were able to see just there was, a, there was an era of music you had to grow up knowing this stuff, right. seeing and witnessing this music right. if you were black. So, yeah, it has some influence, obviously, on, on a lot of people. On a lot of groups, because I think y'all put the blueprint. I think mostly it came out in solo artists. I think when you huh? start thinking right. about some of the solo artists that came out that was doing the Usher stuff, that was mm-hmm. doing the Bobby Order. Mm-hmm influence that something a flavor out of the group had for the TLCs and with BBD's thing mm-hmm. some of the solo stuff influenced people even right. even more than New Edition Be- because I feel like it was the Jackson Fives and after they kind of moved off it was quiet for a second mm-hmm. they had some dudes what is it like some What's on the family Pass like the, the Jets Dutchie? and shit like that? Remember the Jets, the family, the Jets. Oh, I remember the Jets. The Jets and then somebody else from some double, not double Jets, some that some was English the Pass people. The dudes, man, over yeah. from, your, your from musical England. youth. Right. Musical youth, yeah. you know, nothing really clicked. Yeah, but when y'all hit, it was a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. And I think then people started trying to get the, let's get the new the next new edition. Let's right. get the next new That's edition. True. Marie started that too. Yeah, getting, yeah. We got white boy. You know? Yeah, they started getting that. Absolutely. Did y'all feel any kind of way like, man, y'all was trying, trying to, you know, <laughs> try to damn. Steal the yeah, like, trying to do what we do. For the most part, that's how that's how we looked at. That's how music is handed down. You know, okay. you take a little piece from this, a little piece from that, because you grew up around it, or you just you fell in love with it. you. You stumbled upon it somehow, and you added these things to you as an artist as you move mm-hmm. through life. You know, so to me. Like I said, it would, if we take out all of the Jackson and Temptation influence, then what do you got with New Edition? Right, I get that. Some dudes standing around, pop locking all right. day long, like, you know, like a lot of the other dudes was doing. Right. But to take little pieces out of them from the Jacksons and and right. and blend that style with the the stylistic Blue Magic Temptation vibe. That's what the that's what the twist was, and then mix that with the streets and what was going on with the popping right. and break thing. You know, right. Mixing all those things is what makes you have your own identity. But you get bits. So having, having, seeing groups with bits and pieces of what we've done is, I thought it was just natural. That's how it is. I just felt weird. I'm gonna be honest. You know, mm-hmm. you know new kids on the block from 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 Boston too. Mm-hmm. White too. And you ain't feeling them. a little more family. No, I ain't feel them them, but you know they, what? They start selling a lot of albums. Oh, they gonna always family. do that. That's gonna always happen, bro. Uh. <laughs> Come on, man. And we, Come on, son. Me and Dia, any one of them can sit down right now and talk about that. I mean, that's just the way the world is. You know? <laughs> Come on, man. For every Jackson, there's an Osmond, you know? Yeah. For every Whitney, there's a Mariah Carey or so on. Every so Ice on. Cube, there's a Vanilla Ice? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean, I mean, we're, we're going to do this game. We can play this game, okay? Nah, <laughs> nah, nah I feel you. But overall, that's what I'm saying. We we know what that is. They always get the... Um, you can come out and do the same thing. Robin Thicke came out there and he right. was doing his thing. Justin Timberlake. Justin. You go yeah, on and yeah, on. This yeah. goes on and on. Right. Justin Bieber. Right. No, I just feel like they mind. should play at least, at least at least mention or pay homage or where they thought you get from. No, they new kids on the block of my family. Okay. How they got in the game, right. literally, no... They supposed to take advantage of the opportunities. You coming from sure. You coming from the hood. Yeah, Yeah, you coming from the hood. So it's like take advantage. So Maurice wanted to put together a white version of New Edition. A lot of new kids. You know Mm. what I'm saying? Initially, until he wanted to keep the name New Edition, and give it to a new artist. Um, That's what the whole fight in court was at one point. Yeah, we was fighting in court about that at one point. Was he was trying to keep the name New Edition, saying that he had already made it a household thing. You know, and that he wanted to. He wanted to take it with him. They right. can go, but I want my name. Right. Blah blah blah. So, you know, obviously he didn't win that fight. So he found what he said in the court. He said he could have done this with anybody. Ain't this could have been done with any group. Yeah, that's what he said. You could have did this with any five, died, and this, that, and the other, and that. 
you know, I'm mm-hmm. going to do this. I'm going to get me five Caucasians. If it's, well, I don't know if he said Caucasians or white, but he said mm-hmm. he's going to get them five. Um, they're going to do a white version of it. He uh-huh. wanted to give them the name New Edition. Boy. <laughs> yeah, but that didn't work out. Yeah, so he came yeah. out with New Kids, and they blew up and do their thing. Like, you know. What's the other and, white group? And, What's the other white group? Two white groups came out. So, the uh, since then, yeah, it was NSYNC, NSYNC, NSYNC and, too, and, and uh, NSYNC, yeah, uh, Backstreet Boys, back, God damn, it was a whole little run. But you know, all of them was coming out of people who were still tied with that whole <laughs> right Maurice stuff yeah. at that camp over there. Yeah, they was finding ways that he was coming with a new Elvis. If you'd have gave him enough time, you'd have dropped right, it on the that's world. Right. He'd have got us. I promise you, he would have got one. Maybe not from you, but Ma- is he still alright, Maurice Star? Yeah, he's still alive. Man, he's not doing as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not what doing as well as he used to do. Well, good. That's terrible. Why? No, no, man. You don't do that. You don't rip off some young men and you know black young men too, and then put them, oh, rip pe- that off, and then put start another group and all that. No, son. No, Apparently, Maurice Starr got ripped off on that situation too. He got ripped off. Yeah, supposedly what really went down was Maurice got he got he got taken advantage of too, and the company went and split on the so Streetwise mm-hmm. record claim bankruptcy and left with all that candy girl money. Ooh wee! <laughs> when, when, when y'all start getting paid? When did you what, what record? Like last uh, month's record? Um, <laughs> yeah. When did you finally say, that damn, a check is when coming? When we started doing time? shows. When we started, to- when we started touring. So musically, you ain't getting, I mean, album-wise, you wasn't Not making really. no money for a long Back time. Back then, it took a long time, yeah. Long even, time. even Heartbreak, you didn't make no money? First, uh, we made a few dollars on Heartbreak. Okay. But yeah. they were still recouping monies. They were supposedly still right. recouping monies from albums prior to that. And that this is percentage was, yeah. Ooh, it, I, I've been in business like that. I've, I sold some stuff in movies. They still so, recouping. See, the recoup see, is real. Before you can get some something off of it, yeah. I tell any artist, get everything you can up front. All yes. that we make money on the back end, damn the back end, okay? Because they're gonna find a way to make that back end a small end. Listen, so yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. So it's a lot of times we getting pencil whipped, you know, pen whipped. Right, sure, sure. That's where it's the, most of the stuff. But when we went on the road, we started performing, uh, touring. Uh, bless you, Al Heyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank I, you. I to, yes, I was looking out for us, mm-hmm. man. Back in the days, early on, he he spooked in like a shining night, and mm-hmm. that's when we started buying houses and, right. and having cars, and moving our mothers out to projects. And nice. Stuff like that. Now let, let we, we're gonna get in that. We're gonna talk about the, the tour. Mm-hmm. Um, every time y'all come, y'all go out. It's the biggest news. I'm mm-hmm. be honest with you. Every time that goes out, I hear people. I'm gonna get my tickets. I'm gonna get my tickets. I'm gonna mm-hmm. get my tickets. What y'all do about every four years? Is that kind of, kind of feel to it? I don't know. It depends on you know. What people are saying you can feel the buzz when when you put it out there a little bit you put your avenues out there you got your avenues that you put a little feel right. out and if you hear it come back right it could be a couple years it could be three years it could be four but but what because y'all, y'all don't have a record out so y'all just coming out i just on gp of who y'all are mm-hmm. and and y'all what makes it bubble you know what I'm what's, it's what's the, the tour norm? it's the show you just bring it, you, make, you mention a couple people and see what they say, and then you say, "Oh, y'all like it? Let's yeah, do it." Yeah, it's the new because they're they're expecting to see the new edition show, the concert. Sure. So the show is about all the records they already love about you, right? You know, they've already made them number ones, right? They've seen the show in the past. The flip is, what are they going to do? How are they going to twist it up to make it feel fresh? And they always we always seem to do just enough, mm-hmm. whether it's bringing Bobby back, you know, or having right. a combination that they mm-hmm. haven't seen mm-hmm. in a minute, or combination of records the particular records we do the staging mm-hmm. what outfit vibe we're gonna come with this time you know so all those things keep it. and the energy that temptation stylistic slash jackson right. meets mm-hmm. the streets mm-hmm. you know that vibe can't really be caught nowhere else you got to come with new edition saying they're coming through there's a lot of people who grew up in that style sure. of entertainment that's like yo you got to go see these dudes do their thing who chooses like, the outfits, the choreography? Like, who does that amongst y'all? Brooke Payne has been our choreographer since okay, back since, in the, since okay. way back in the day. So all he does is come in and kind of brushes everything up. Okay, you know, shout out to Brooke Payne. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He goes over and oversees the production of the show overall to make sure the yeah, outfits visually. The- yeah, a lot of the outfits he's involved with all this stuff. A lot of the outfit stuff, honestly, be coming from the group itself. Okay. And mainly coming from Michael Bivens. Okay, I can see that. Biv does a lot of stuff with apparel, and he's just, you know, he's just been known for being a fashion cat. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we'll start with some of the, a lot of his vision. What okay. he's saying, and we'll fine tune it. I don't want to mm-hmm. wear a hunting hat. Right. Or, you know, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. we'll fine tune it. But most of the stuff that is done is done by the group, and people who's been with us since day one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how long does it take you to prepare to start doing the show? Two months out? Three months out? Uh, 
The last tour we did mm-hmm. probably took was supposed to be two months, I guess, or a month and a half or something like that. That I remember everybody flew here for the legacy tour rehearsals. It was crazy, man, because they flew here, they did a month, they did about no, they did about two or three weeks in one spot, and then leading up to the I think it was about a month. They did the rehearsals and then leading up, it was about a 10 day stretch before the first show after Ooh. that. So it was about mm. a month and some days like that. Okay. And right when they was getting ready to leave to, no, right before we were switching locations to start the rehearsal with the band and mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. The, the COVID hit the camp. Oh, wow. The whole camp. So it was like 12 people or so in the group where, and within the camp, within the dancers, the guitar player, the stuff, you know, one of the, one of the uh, choreography helpers, myself, Ricky, you know, some of the members themselves, just all of a sudden, boom, this is like 10 days before it's time to go On do this first, first show. Yeah, right, first, first day. Date. Nobody's done. I probably did two days worth of rehearsals. I hadn't been in none of them. Not one rehearsal. So I'm learning the show. They don't send you a video of it? Just kind of my That's what I was trying to do it while they were still rehearsing, but after right. a while, the whole thing got shut down because... Right. Once everybody got there, I got sick first because I hadn't been to no rehearsals. I went to one, left, I started getting sick. Got checked up, they said, man, you got COVID. Yeah, COVID. So I called them and said, man, everybody need to get checked in there because I haven't been anywhere else. And so they started going through the crew and it was just popping up until there was about 12, 13 people in the camp. So they shut it down. Mm. So we're all taking the test every certain amount of days to just see if we're going to make this first first show. Right. So. That's and in long story short, we just barely short. We made a we just barely made it for that first show. Wow. The opening show for the Legacy Tour. That whole week and all that was almost getting ready to get pushed back another two weeks, but we was able to pull it off, man. Just That's a miracle. Time. That's a miracle. So do y'all also start say it's not tight that next night, like day when you go to the next city? I thought I've seen people. You rehearse there, like in a hotel back in the lobby. We do. You know, in that a lot of times it's at the spot. Well, once yeah, you're yeah. there, we we'll show up and we we'll stay. We'll the first show. Wherever the city is for the mm-hmm. first show, we'll go stay there and we'll rehearse a couple of days before the first show mm-hmm. on the actual stage. Mm-hmm. So that's the first time you do a full run through. And if you got pyro and you got whatever's going on with it, you know, all that stuff has to be done before the um, first show. We had like, but we didn't, we, we had like one of those. I think it was the morning of the show. We did a rehearsal. Well, it was the first time we ran through the whole show and there were hiccups. It was stuff that wasn't right. Right, sure. We had to kind of stop, start it over. So it's like, if this happens tonight in that spot, it's going to be the most, right. you know. And somehow, it all came together. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Yeah. And really? how do you feel if not, if something doesn't, does it really bother you? If it doesn't work out that night, you get know, home? At home? this point, not as much as it used to. Okay. When I was younger, it would bother the hell out of me. But these days, it's just something that, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I got to, you know, I just got to keep working on that, you know. But not just you, but it could be something that somebody's not doing the right moon, the beat. If it's anybody moon. else, it's the same thing. It's like, ah, oh, we didn't, we didn't, we, we weren't able to give them the A show, the A game tonight, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. We gave them a B or C, or you can write, right. depending on what what the problem is. But again, the track record with any has been, when we hit that stage, we're gonna put it all out there. Sure. Whatever, for whatever that is, we're gonna leave it on the stage. People like to see that. Sure, sure. Our fans like to see that. No, man. I mean, like I said, when your tour is all the women I know is like, I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. Mm-hmm. Whatever you know, there's been other bands that's coming through, and it's not the same height. It's some you know mm-hmm. height and energy that we mm-hmm. want to go see and go see him. But mm-hmm. when y'all come through, it, it, it's about the tour, yeah. not about the you know the spot. Somebody's coming to see you. They right. coming to this city. Hell no, it's about the whole tour. They they getting back together, and I think. You gotta That's be right. proud of that, brother. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they man. don't do they don't do that for? Yeah. I a do. whole bunch of people. You know what yeah, I'm saying? The ups and downs y'all been through, man, as a group to be still together, whatever yeah. form it is. Um, you know, do you feel a certain way? I mean, I just you keep know, on you know, so a lot of jokes are thrown to Bobby's way because he mm-hmm. ain't doing, you know, whatever. How mm-hmm. do you feel about you? Is it what it is? Is that your point? You it's try to part of living in the game, you know. This, we live with the world watching us. And it's been, mm-hmm. like, been like that since we was little boys. So whatever came our way from since we was little boys, we, we're immune to the game that okay. way now. It's like we get it, you know. Right. And ain't nobody going to always be – I like half the people that's pointing and making those remarks about whoever at this right. age and in the stage in their life. If they was to go back to the old them and look at themselves, come on now, yeah, you know, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, no, no, come on now, they would be, on. we'd be pointing our fingers at them too. But all right, that's just a part of the game, man. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions, and then we get to another movement, and we almost done. Um, 
this is, I asked fans to ask me quite, you know, the questions about the, the movie. Yeah. Because I didn't see it. So these are some of the questions uh -huh. they asked me. So I'm going to ask a couple of them. Come on, right. shoot. Um, did, did that really happen? Did y'all put Bobby out the uh, group in on the bus, out the band? On the bus. Did it happen from the bus or the decision? No, that didn't happen on the, that didn't happen like that. That's what it showed in the movie. That wasn't in the movie like that. What are they talking about? They said, y'all put him out, y'all decided to put him out the group while y'all was on the bus, the decision. No? The decision made on the bus while they was driving, no. Okay. No, I believe there was a time where we were sat down and we were asked individually, you know, we got to mm -hmm. make a decision, man. He's going to pretty much F up the group's image. Y'all going to go out here and something's going to be off our front news soon where all y'all gonna go down or y'all need to let him go do his thing mm -hmm. you know that was the kind of we did have that meeting where they tried to get everybody to make a decision right away and most of us i think it was because like, man, all right we, let us think about it you know it's, okay this is a serious decision okay makes sense this is about your um brook Payne. Mm -hmm. in the movie did they get in front of brook Payne's car and start singing and dancing to get him to manage them ronnie wasn't in the group yet <laughs> It was similar to that. It was very similar to that scene. I remember going to Brooks' house. It was an alley that was similar to that alley. Okay. And us just trying to get his attention, you know, uh -huh. letting him know we were a group. Mm -hmm. And we sang, and we know that he uh, he starts like we knew some of the groups in Boston that he was known for. Mm -hmm. They were really uh, they were popular. And most people older than us, obviously, but they were like the Untouchables. Right. And another one called his group was called A Touch of Blue, and they had the, the transitions. Okay. So those three right there to us were like. Yo, we can have that flavor. They, they was like pimps up there. They was, they was, right, sure, they was, sure. They was cold, right? right. Like Delphonics meets the streets in the eighties, and the, you know, it was just some other stuff like that. Okay, New magic. So we just thought that was the coolest vibe in the world. We wanted to be like Brooke Payne and them. So okay, we just we really just stand in front of them. I don't know if we did that, did it like that. Right. What I remember in my head was he invited us up to his crib, up into the house. He let us come in, and we went into his crib. Even that, you know, even what they showed in the movie happened before mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and then we eventually show came back because in the movie he didn't do nothing with a stage. Like, all right, come by to such and such, blah blah blah. So we ended up going by. Whenever, whenever, it, what I do remember is the first time encountering Brooke was in his crib when we did any dancing or anything. Right, was in his house, and he played "Where Were You When the Lights Went Out" in New York City. Oh wow! And he started making oh. a routine uh -huh. to that, and he said, "Let me see you do this." And so we started following behind him, and he was like, "All right." do this and he started building a routine for that song for us and that's what we would come by there and practice until we ended up merging him with our current was like our current manager Travis Gresham at the time which I miss dearly man it's just the way Travis whole thing got uh pushed away or how he ended up out of the camp or the family was just some it was just touch it's one of them things back in the day we didn't even address that in the movie okay but he was a major part of the early days when him and Brooke they were kind of managing it, managing it together. Brooke was the choreographer first, and Travis was the manager okay. when we first started doing all this stuff. Okay, okay. Um, before I ask one more question on this, the movie, did y'all get y'all put input? Did you get allowed, were you allowed to put input mm -hmm. a little bit? Like this, that, yeah. You did get your input in there? Yeah, all oh. the stories was directly from the group members. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, um, I think Jesse Collins produced that? Yeah. Do you know Jesse Collins used to be my stand-in for How to Be a Player? Used to be a stand-in. My stand-in from How to Be a Player. That's yeah. hilarious. He was my stand-in when I moved over. He came in with the cameras and lights that. and boom and he boom. I think I can see that. You... I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. What's up, Jesse? Shout out yeah, to Jesse. Jesse Collins. Yeah, he a yeah. big time producer. I said, what the? I started seeing his name behind on BT stuff. I said, hold up, my stand-in is blowing up. Yeah, Jesse yeah. can get you all kind of where he keep you on the award show. Come on now, come on, Jesse the boss. Kind of this a boss. Yeah, all right, I'll ask you one more from here. Is it? Um, Oh, okay. Well, I'll say this one, I guess. The close-knit of who y'all were. Y'all were pretty close on the road. I'm, I'm guessing mm -hmm. y'all are very close. Mm -hmm. um, what was mm -hmm. the name? R Ricky and his wife went on Vlad TV and talked about having a drug problem. You didn't see that? Y'all didn't notice that at all? Not at all. Not initially. Be that close? Not at all. Wow. Because we're close. Excuse me. We're yeah. close, but when it's time to go, once we finish doing what we got to do as a right. group, everybody's into their own world sure. so it's not like we're on the phone every day and this that and the other we'll do a tour that lasts that's just back in the days our early tours was long so okay. we'd be on we'd be on the tour we'd be, we'd be on the road for six seven months you know and then we'll take a break come right back out and do what, what they what they call the b market tour I know. there you go you know okay. what i'm talking about go put that up and come back and do the c 
Mm-hmm. Then it was time to go overseas or move to come, come do something else and come back. And so when you're doing it like that, right? Once you finish doing those runs, everybody's into their own world. During that, I don't think that that's where he was having his issues at. Okay, you know, neither one of them. If that was the case, I do know that. Um, eventually he came to the he came to the table and i didn't know anything about it the group was either coming together to to hear him because he had already went to some sort of intervention or something cool so one of the things they have you do is i guess confess everything Mm -hmm. so he had to come tell us i think this was during the time we was doing the bad boy album with puffy or right right after that or something right around that time it's the first time i ever heard we sitting down it's like wow really and he was like yeah man it was bad it wasn't no simple I was like, right, how, right. how did I, like you're saying, it's right, the same thing. I was going, how did I miss the, what I'm missing? Man. Yeah. But, but but that's my brother. Oh, of course. And we all came, you know, we were there for the whatever needs to be done. Right, sure. To, to get back on track. You know, so. I would. I met him a couple of times in L.A., really cool guy, you know, yeah. really cool guy. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. you don't know what people have, what demons, you know, they have. You just be right. surprised, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, wow, I didn't know that. It's funny because I'm, you know, I'm behind the scenes a lot of times. I, people tell me about certain people. I like so-and-so. Is that person so-and-so? I'm like, boy, if, mm-hmm. you know, behind the scenes is a little different. You know, yeah, a little yeah. different, you know. That's I, right. I tried to shit on nobody. I'm like, hey, okay, a little different, though. A little yeah. different. All right. Well, look, I'm mm-hmm. going to play a little game we got here. We call it hoish and broish. <laughs> hoish and broish. Hoish and broish. So what it is is. Uh-oh. I'm gonna ask you something. Yeah. You tell me, do you think it's something a bro, you know, bro, bro dude should do, or some hoish type of thing that a man should do, you know, should, that he's doing. It's over 25, a man over 25, so it ain't no 16, 18, 19 year old boy. It's a grown ass man. Grown ass man. When I say this, you got three seconds to tell me what your feeling is. Don't be sitting there thinking, that's too long, bro. What all you right. feel, when I say it, you <laughs> go right. and tell me. Let's see, that could stop it. What if I say the wrong thing by accident? No, that's all right, you know, hoish or broish. Broish. Got you, let's go. Here we go. All right. Eating a pizza with a knife and fork. Hoish. What's wrong with the nice in the restaurant man. and shit, man? Nobody, you, know? you better grab it with your hand. That's, oh, man. Y'all from Boston, man. That's oh. how we do it back here. I don't know how y'all do it. A fork? Okay, yeah. No, let's keep Maybe, it. Not, Next. You, know, you, don't, you don't get dirty, man. You know what I'm saying? It's greasy. All right. I can, all right. Let me do that then. All right. All right. Let me try with this one. Having a tattoo behind your ear. <laughs> I don't what? know what to call hoish, man. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ain't doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want nothing behind, behind my ear. Like, you know, you know. No, man, like, we're, we're not doing that. With the kids' names or something? Yeah, no, we're not doing Any that. Any tour? No. Legacy, right there? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm clean. <laughs> no, no, I did. All right. 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 All right, I got Hold. it. Oh, <laughs> damn. Put that behind there. wee Okay, here we go. All right, all right. Um, and, and I'm talking about all over. But watch me get shot. Booty hole and everything I'm talking about. Hold, hold, hold up, brother. I know. Hold. Hold, hold up, brother. Let me finish it. Okay. All right. Manscaping, brother. Like, you know, shaving and manscaping. Man, you should, what? Hold oh. up. What? Nigga, you better let it stay raw, man. Stop playing. Hell. This is a man. Oh, 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 oh man. You, you got to go through that period where you got to get that booty itch <laughs> where it's trying to grow back. <laughs> Is that what, I don't know. Is that right? what you going to have happen? No, well, yeah, that's, okay. that's not no. for no man, oh, Okay, man. I'm just no. saying. I'm just saying, man. Nope. Shit. All right, here we go. All right, growing at man. Mm-hmm. Skinny jeans. Ho. Oh. Oh, what, 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 come on, brother. You're the, the, the. Ho-ish. Damn. Got a little bag bag. You're in, no the bag. Wrong, you're in the wrong era for, for oh, me, for them. Oh, like, maybe. Okay. All right, all right. I don't know. All right, here we go. I like the, where we're going. Okay, what about FaceTime and your homeboy. Oh man, listen, unless it's an emergency. Right. Something really need to be discussed. Hoish. Hoish. Thank you. You know how many people come in here and talk about bro, we got some bro shit to bro, do. Bro, what? Why? Why? I, I don't need to see you, nigga. I know what you look like. Right. Come yeah, over. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about yeah, it, but come, no, I don't yeah. need to see come you. Over, right, come over. Let's face to face this one. We're not going to be right. out here. Here, this one here. Duck lipping. All right. Well, my favorite one. Sit with your, with your, with your legs crossed. You know what, right. like, what? It's, it's see if a hoeing or pimping. Come on, brother. See if a hoeing or pimping. Okay, okay, okay. You either pay, it's a cross. Okay. But if you just a regular dude with skinny jeans, I said skinny jeans. No, no, the regular jeans. You, you can't, can't do that. No. No, ho, that's no, ho-ish. no. You, that was meant for people with with baggies on and slacks oh. that used to blow in the wind. Is that what it is? Yeah, you can put, you can cross your leg like that. That was pimping. Right, I'm gonna give you two more. I mean, I'm okay. This guy, I'm scared of you. Do you know what Chelsea boots are? Chelsea? No, I don't. The ones that come up here, you know, they, they, they leather and all that. They just come up here, though. They got a zipper on the side sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Got suede sometimes. The, the pointy toes. Yeah, well, you know, 
Hell yeah. Square toe, pointy toe, well, square. Whatever. Just come over here, Ho-ish. brother. Hoish. Yeah. I got to throw away my two boots. Let them go, man. Let them uh, go, man. Let them go. I may not see that on the next concert. No, nah, uh, man. Candy. Girl. My next concert candy. or yours? <laughs> nah, nah. I know you ain't going to see it in mine, bro. <laughs> so, say if, if, um, if, um, what's his name? Uh, not Ronnie. Oh, my name, my name. No. The one that makes your clothes and shit in your group. Michael. Michael. Yeah, my mind's over. Yeah. If Michael came with the boots and said, but the boots is what it is. The boot nah, boots. Nah. Michael yeah. probably be the main one to toss them out the door. He tossed them out the door. Yeah, he ain't having that. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going to get you the last one. I think you might. Let's see where this goes. Okay, the last one. Charm bracelet. You know, charm bracelet. You know, a couple of things hanging. Oh, like this? Ooh. Well, I mean, you might, you might have a trinket. This on is your, a dragon. Okay. Okay. That make it more powerful? I think it depends on what you're putting on it. Okay. So it can be. It can be. I'm sorry. It could be some trinkets is cool. Some trinkets? Okay. Yeah, some trinkets is cool. All right, all right. Yeah. I got you. I got you. All right. So what we did, we, we go to your um your IG page. Yeah. And we uh my crew does and they select some pictures and we want to see what you was thinking about when you uh <laughs> when, when you was rocking this, okay, thinking of this. All right, so we go to your IG page, we look, it's called IG creeping. Uh-huh. Creep on your IG page. IG you put it out creeping. there, brother. Yeah, you put it out there. Okay. What was you thinking when you saw this right here? We did this right here. What is going on here, bro? <laughs> That's the Wiz and my impression of Michael Jackson on the Wiz, man. That was Halloween night. Oh, oh it was Halloween. Okay. Yeah, of okay. course. I don't know. Maybe tourists. I'm something. just rolling around on. I some... don't know how you get down, man. Y'all man, well, listen. That's what I'm glad you're asking. Okay. okay. No, that was Halloween. I was Halloween. doing Michael Jackson from the Wiz. Okay. Okay. All right. That, that was a good one. This... Right, you, you went. Well, what was the rest of your family? Were they, were they in something too? They're somewhere they... around. It was the rest of the yeah. The oh, rest of the wig. Like with, Dorothy with... and Tin Man and okay. all that. Yeah, all we right, had the whole flying monkeys. All right, oh, damn, okay. Yeah. All right, so the next one, what were you thinking with this, right? Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, this is what you do on I'm the producing, side? I'm producing music. You produce? I'm at the crib, of course I do. Yeah, man. So your music, so your album, some of you, you produce some of the some albums Some of the you stuff on there, I write and produce them, yeah. Nice, I didn't yeah, know but that. I'm always co-producing. I had some co-producing with Sensitivity. Wow, that's wrong, okay, In that okay. album. Okay, all right, what about this joint right here? What are we doing right here? There's another one. Okay, the Taliban. What's going on here, man? Oh, I'm on the beach. I'm oh, nice. from the sun. I was doing some um, drops that was Drop. too sunny for it. Yeah, so I had to put this top over my head oh, okay. to do some drops while I was at the beach. All right, all right. What we got? We got another one? I don't know how this works. but okay. Taliban. Hell to the no. Somebody got to do it. Nigga. No, manscaping, nigga. <laughs> Somebody got to do it. Why got to be you? I'm by the water. What you think? I'm cool. Let's make, I'm by myself. It's like, you know, when you, you got, got s- that 70s chest, nigga. I ain't gay or nothing. What the fuck's going on here? Smooth. Fred Williams. You know, all that talk on me, nigga. Manscape, man. Make it smooth for the. Th- My man. baby love that, man. It okay, ain't for it you. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. right. I ain't doing that for you. <laughs> you about to that? I know you ain't. It ain't for me, bro. I'm about the water. I was, if right. I saw you there with all your right. chest like, like that, you said, listening, like I don't you. think I would feel it neither, man. It's like, that ain't. It ain't about you. Right I, love it, nigga, nigga. I ain't mad at you playing. Right. Where was y'all? That's beautiful wherever it was. That's out my old crib right before I moved back to Cal back from Cal. That's out in Oxnard, California. Oh no, Oxnard? Hell yeah. Yep, that's out there, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Channel Channel Island, I think. Ox- yeah, yeah. That's what it yeah. That's yeah, where nice. I'm out there chilling by my crib. That's what I'm talking about. Oxnard's Just a nice pizza. place too. That's Oxnard's beautiful. A really out there, place. Man. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They starting to come a little starting to become a little where they stealing nope. a lot of co- breaking into cars and them Latinos up there. <laughs> yeah, they started. Oh, they started no, to no, get no, it yeah, in. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I performed there one time in Oxnard. Yeah, it's got some. It's nice, nice out there, though. All right, all right. We got one more picture. Let's see what we, what, right, what we here got. You go. What do you got? Oh, that's it. That was the last one. Oh, that was the last one. That Damn, man. See? All right, she got. Well, the, la- the ladies stuff. pull these pictures. Next time, I'm coming with some of his pictures. Uh, pictures hell no! You want IG creep me? Yeah, I'm gonna bring it back when he was on tour with us, opening up and show you his suit he used to wear. Hell no! Don't do that to me. All right, we do a little quick game. It's called spin the wheel. Everybody got to spin it, okay? So there's a couple of things on there people know already. You can tell if it lands on it, you, know, you got to do it and tell us what it is. Hot one is lost your virginity. A celebrity crush call. You put the phone up after, you know, you're talking to a celebrity. See, it takes a minute to see if you can Mac or not Mac and see what it is. Get it off your chest. What you've been, well, off that chest. Yeah, get it off that chest and shit if you got something to get off your chest. <laughs> right. yeah, nothing to get off that chest but my baby. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, man. Uh, who would you trade places with and why? And uh, a real secret and kind of, yeah, that's my A oh, real secret. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Um, the biggest lie I ever, I ever told. told. Yeah, the biggest lie you ever told. Mm. Get so let's get let's give him a little roll. Let's get let's get a rock oh brace, man. Goodness, really? That's what we're doing. Yeah, all you gotta do that. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say no. Say no. Wheel of fortune. Yeah, like damn sure is here. 
Ain't no fortune. Where's the wheel of fortune? Where the money at? Put some motherfucking spin on that. Where the money? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It was a wax band? Oh, man. What does that say? Celebrity crush call. What is that supposed to do? Um, okay, you got a you got a phone on you? Nah. Are you an actor? Can you act? Can I act? Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Like, what? You good? Okay. Okay. What okay, you okay. want me to do? I'm, I'm about to tell you. I'm a director. Okay. You you you, 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 you maybe got the phone. You got a phone over there? No phone. Okay, it's all good. You can use mine, man. Shit, I ain't, I ain't got nothing no more. What are we acting? I, I got the shot. Okay. What it is is this. This is the scenario. Uh -huh. Okay. You're you're calling. Uh, famous actress, you know. I mean, it's, in the movie, it's a scene, okay? Your baby, your girl. Oh, but you got. Goodness. I know, I know. It's a celebrity. Are oh, my you my an brother? actor? No, no, no. Oh, this one. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is what it is. Here's the set. I'm setting the scene. I'm a director. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna see. Oh my god. We got you calling. Think of somebody celebrity. Just yeah. anybody. I don't give a damn. You got a crush on me or not? Just mention a name. I know okay. you got a beautiful woman with you. You can't be more perfect than her. I get that. But nope. right now, we got we we in acting mode. So think. Of, hold on. Hold on. Let me explain to you how you do it. You call, mm -hmm. but you gotta say their name. Like, hey, whoever, Serena, whatever the hell you gonna call. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna see how you talk on the phone, back and forth. You are trying to get her to your house or you to her house. I mean, I'm you know how you wanna get, do it. E either one works. Right. And, and for dinner, whatever. Paint the picture. You got a minute and a half, up to a minute and a half. Let me see. What, quiet on the set. I got up to a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do the Mac within a minute and a half. Are we rolling right now? And action. Oh, me a minute and a half, man. It's gonna be quicker than that. Oh no, hell no. You act. I need, I need a minute, brother. Hey, listen. All right, hold on. I gotta type it in then first, right? Or you just catch me in the middle of it. What the hell? Yeah, you catch me in the middle of the conversation. Oh, okay, you gotta okay, do this right. right. You want right, me to act? Right. Say the name of who it is. We need to know who you're talking to. Paint that picture, brother. Paint that picture. <laughs> Paint that picture. Hey, yo, what's up? Is this, who's this? This Sade? Sade. Oh, okay. Yeah, listen. Shh. You're gonna blow it for me, man. <laughs> what's up? It's Ralph Tresman. Yeah. From New Edition. Remember we were supposed to do that duet? When you wanna work on it? Yeah. I can come over there now. I can, I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Give me a minute. I'll be over there. I'll call you when I'm near. All right. Side day. Damn. Damn. You like Bobby Brown. You're a pimp. You're straight to the point. <laughs> you, ain't see, you, ain't, you ain't see how she was doing this shit, nigga? Oh, man. Man. Can't even make it seem like that's what I'm trying to do. I just want to work on this music. Damn. You, you learned something today, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I learned something. Yeah. Get right to the point. <laughs> Bitch, you trying to fuck? Click. <laughs> shit, the fuck you going on here? All right, hey, look, you might have done another podcast, but you ain't never done a podcast where they gave you gifts. No, I didn't. Own shit, okay? What you got here? Open it up and look at it. Talk to we'll talk about it. We pull it out. All right, let's see. The Pierre package. Oh, yeah, there it is. Pull out whatever. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. Pull it out. Okay, what, is, what is this? Open it up. I'll show you. This look like you. God damn. Yeah. Well, where <laughs> one, but it's a dope situation. Let me see something. It's a dope situation. You dang on right. That's it. Damn. Come on, nobody. nobody else. What kind of oh, package oh, you put this in? Give it to a man. Yeah, hey, all right, man. Man. Shit, man. Shit, man. Shit, okay. He put them nails in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> that right there is a official do rag, car rag, and if you know. You know, you by yourself. And unfortunately, you can, you know, some people do more with it. Wipe it off. What okay. it, look at this here. Okay, there it is. That's official. Oh, I'm sorry. Baby. I'm looking at this one. Yeah, Pierre. Pierre. Okay, that's it's right. It's official. That's right, man. Do rag, whatever, you know. Your lady might want to wrap it up. If you see any man hand. wearing this around. Oh, don't do that, man. Don't do that. <laughs> You're a cold-blooded piece right there, Listen. bro. Listen. You cold-blooded. Okay. You going to get at the meter where as a do rag? I know you was planning on me giving it to somebody. Oh, you, you, your woman, right. Now, you she ain't gonna now, now I, I was gonna get you a large, but I saw your chest, so we got you a medium. Okay, she said, okay, so we got a medium right there, brother. That's good. Here he go. <laughs> yeah, that fits, man. Come on, that's official. It's soft, it's slim cut. Come on, man. Pierre's panic room. I got a new edition shirt, so we even now. The panic room. That's right. That's where we at. Why? Why people be panic? Why you got panic? No, no, no. You know what a panic room is? It's a safe place in your house. When, when danger comes, you run in there. You, you can talk to the phone. You can talk to people. That's what you ever seen a movie that called means there room? was some danger nearby. So yeah, the, the world is danger. In here, you ain't no danger, bro. Okay. Now, that's a card game. You play Uno. Comedy you, hype. Yes, it's a that's a black card game that has like uh, it's all about comedy movies. You own this? Huh? Own or in it? Own. No, no. The comedy hype does. Black owned comedy. Comedy hype, hype yeah, owns yeah. the wrong So you can play games. I mean, it's like a you know. Trivia game and stuff, but, but okay, black stuff, sitcoms, you. movies, and whatever the case may be. Okay. Yeah. Can, more than, can you have to play with this? Like, can you have like a couple people? Two people? Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Well, like, you can't play one. Like, yeah, but it's official now. 
That cup's so dope. Okay. But now hold on. Don't wash it in hot. Then the goddamn letters pop off. I can see right. it. It feels okay. like Always cold. To... Right. Always cold. Okay. The handle yeah. only lets me. I can only get two fingers in it. <laughs> right, right. Come on. Okay, really? What's that? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's broish and not hoish. This is broish? Yeah. It's bro-ish. A coffee? With my a name coffee on it. mug? Yeah. With his name on it? With my name on it's it. It's hoish if I put my lips on it, though. Oh, hell no. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not going to happen. Hey. <laughs> That's funny. Well, give somebody a drink some coffee out of it. And here we and go. Now, woo, what'd that say? Can you read that, brother? What'd that say? Can I read it? I hope so. Oh, come on, real. My 100 homies and phonies. Of what? Of Hollywood. Ooh, I spent 10 years, on, 11 years in Hollywood. Ah, so you in here, you just I putting it out there? I think y'all in here too, nigga. Y'all in here. Go, go to the ends. You putting it out there? I put, go oh, to I the see. ends. I thought I saw something. Go to the ends. All the way? No, but you can go in the front to see the index. But you, Damn, yeah. man, you said go to the index? No, I thought I saw the end it. Of it the, end, the letter end. New additions in there. Go to the index. Go down to the end. I'm going to. Oh, that's a photo in there too. Look what that photo is in there. Hold on, I'm gonna show you a photo in there. What is that photo? Where's it at? I'm gonna show you a photo real quick, bitch. Y'all, you're gonna like it. Yeah, I've been around, player. Look at man. Listen, man. We had hair. Those were the days. Oh, that's all you want to come? Okay. <laughs> Where's that picture I'm looking for? Boom! Don't say I don't know your folks, man. Don't do that to me, bro. Who's that? Who's that? I don't know who that is. Okay, his name is his name is Ricky Ricky Bell. Oh, Does that ring a bell? That's Ricky Bell. Yeah, yeah. New uh, I knew who that was. Who's that beside him? Nigga, me. Man, that's when I was handsome. Look at him. Uh, yeah, I'm from two weeks. I was killing oh. the game. <laughs> I had muscles and everything. I had a white beater on. <laughs> he had. Yeah. A, he really did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wearing a white yeah, beater yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. Go to the ends, And a man. bucket hat. The bucket was not, yeah, no, the, wherever the ends are in there. I went to, I'm getting to the end. You getting to the end, Mr. Okay. I did. New edition, boy, come on, player. Promoter Alan Heyman, you put Al on there too. Yeah, that's yeah, so how I got to the tour. Yeah. I spoke about some of the stuff that we did. 1998. Come on now. Promoter Al Heyman. Yeah. Would send me out on tour with different musical acts. He asked if I would like to go. You know what's funny? What? He asked me if I'd like to open up a new edition and on their home again tour. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny is that we would actually look for you. We was putting together packages, mm-hmm. and he would say, well, where's, where's Pierre? Now, he'd be he out there killing. He killed him last time, whatever. Mm-hmm. We would start doing stuff like that to see if he was available. Man, all I saw was you took Gary Owens with y'all. I was like, hold up. Right. What about me, black brother? Was you mad at that time? Hey, damn, damn right I was. Like he was when Gary was doing his new. Sync was doing. He was doing his new church joke and all that stuff. Yeah, I, guess, was, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad. It at was it. hitting the. It was hitting the circuit right. like, hey, differently right there. Next time, give me that book. I'm gonna sign it for you and make it official. Okay. But um, but That's um, yeah, next time new edition or or Ralph Trasvan wants to tour, you say, yo, my man. No, nah, you don't want to perform in front of these 16 people, man. Man, don't you do that? <laughs> don't you do that, bro? <laughs> You know I was lying. You know I was lying, man. Go ahead, Ralph. Go ahead with that, Ralph. Go ahead with that. <laughs> nah, nah, man. man. I, man I, you too big for that. Man, don't. Really? You too big really, for me, man. Really, y'all playing stadiums, and I, I can't even fill this room up? You too big for me now, man. Don't do that, man. No, man. Don't do that to me. We used to could afford Pierre. We really, really? Well, no you know more. what? My prices, my last year's prices is this year's prices. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> they ain't moved, brother. Last year's prices. <laughs> right. Shit ain't really moved, brother. So yeah. we ain't got that. No, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother, being a man no, of your man. word, showing up, man. You did and coming it, right? here, bro. No, man. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed talking to you, brother. I really, really did. No, it's fun, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been watching the show. I've seen people come on here and I was like, yeah, I got to get on there and see my man one day. I appreciate you know? that. No, for real, for mm-hmm. real. I wish you nothing but success, man. Like I told you, man, you are like, what, what, they, what would they call it? Like a, a treasure, man. Y'all are like a treasure, brother. And I, hope, I know you know it, and I hope you even know it more, man. But you are, man. You know what I'm saying? We we roll with y'all since like 83. You know what I'm it's saying? Crazy, y'all still right? like, that's why I love when I hear y'all selling out shows still. It's crazy, right? It's amazing. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's because of the dynamic of the group. And the thing I love is no matter if they broke away or did this, it, you, it still came back. Mm-hmm. It still comes back. Yeah. And there's people nowadays that don't want to come back at all. It don't make no sense. You know right? what I'm saying? They don't want to bag at all. They just struggle and go through hell. You know what I'm saying? All they had to do was come. There it is. You know, just say, look at man. Let's, yeah, let's let go. bygones be gone. And I'm quite sure you've done that in, with, well, with your fellas. That's what the rock roll. That's what them rock groups do. Come on, YouTube. You YouTube two still been together. They've been Led Zeppelin and shit. Sleeping yeah. with each other's wives. Oh, oh wow, damn. They knocked each other. I mean, not just that right, group. Right, I don't right. know that particular story about them. I'm just saying, I've seen these stream stories behind scenes, behind scenes with some of them. But, you know, they go out there and talk about they can get, make $15 million a man and all that. It's like they're putting all that to the side. If I got to stay in my own hotel, my own bus, see you guys on stage when I get there, right. when I'm 
Right, uh, right, right. I'm going to get that bread. You, you know, I was on a tour. R&B artists can't. No, no, rappers either. They I can't was on, keep that business together. I was See, on rappers tour. Neither, yeah. Who was that? Bone Thugs and Harmony one time, right? I was mm-hmm. on tour with them back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Every one of them niggas that wanted their own bus. Mm-hmm. Are you crazy, man? That's just tricking off money. Well, we've done that. What? Yeah. We've Don't do that, that, bro. Don't do that. We just did that. that. I was on my own bus this tour. Well, y'all, but hold on, y'all. This, this, they was just popping at that time. Yeah, y'all have established himself, okay? It's, it's different, different now. Yeah, it's different now. Yeah, y'all deserve different. y'all. You know, y'all old enough. Y'all got cramps and farting and spitting and shitting it up. Don't want to be around each other. Yeah, like yeah. It's, that it's too time, long. right? It's, it's time to have your lady with you. Just you know what I'm saying? Don't want to be around nobody that long, man. It's yeah. like, okay, I already got to hang out here with you. I'm on my own space. You know? There it is, man. Yeah. I want you. Got anything coming out new that we can talk? about? Oh, man, you know I'm doing the radio gig now. Right, I heard. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm doing that from Sunday through Thursday, 7 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern. It's the Love and R&B show, man, you know, Urban, uh, Reach Media, Urban One. Right, Reach you, Media. You, you solo with it or you was Al Bichur? You solo? No, Al's gone. Okay, Al, so yeah, you, Al, you took Al, the spot. When Al, when Al got, yeah, when he went out, yeah, right, I moved I think, in. Right, right. They called me up. They knew I was interested in trying to do this thing for years, you know. Okay. So, unfortunately, Al got sick and, you right. know, but it was an opportunity for me to go in there and just try to... Uh, Take off where he left off, you know. Right, right. Didn't you have a? Don't you have a residence, residency in Vegas? They're talking up? about it. Are you talking about it's it? It's not. Yeah, it's not official yet. But we're working on. We've been talking with them for many, many years. Probably around the same amount of years that we was trying to right. do the new edition story. Right. It took a long time for that to come. You that know, would be so dope. But I didn't realize how large those were until like Usher did it. People, people fly all over the country to come see Usher yeah. in Vegas. You yeah, know, we're going to Usher, so I can see y'all right there with it. Yeah, there's some good shows up there, man. Especially if they let you do. Something that you can't do live, um, touring. You can't right. you can't travel with it. Right. They put together that kind of stage where it's really something flying special that the people as fans never seen before, probably never get a chance to see again because we just don't have that type of level of budget that they can give you in these spots. Okay. And or just the tourability of certain effects and stunts. So just whatever can be done, we know that that's what we're trying to pull off. We're okay. trying to make something special so that. You know, this is right, 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 different than right, right, their regular tour. And, right, and so somebody. it gives them a reason to want to fly right. there from New York. Right. Let me go see the new edition. I'll get to gamble, go see the new edition right. while I'm there. Right. You know, so make an event, but we want it to be something where it's worth doing that. You know, that right, the sure. word goes around like, oh man, they set from the set to the outfits to the this to the that. It's right. just impeccable. Is, is it going to happen? It could, yeah. It's, I mean, it's real talk. Right. That's I hope it does happen. It's what's being discussed right now, you know, so. So it we'll could see. be the next couple of years, a year or two. It could be sooner than that. I don't wow, know. Wow. Okay. It could be. I mean, they've been really talking about it. Like they're ready. To, they're ready to go. It's coming off this last. Coming off the legacy tour. The, sure. I'm sorry. The culture tour. Oh. The one before that one. Okay. They were talking about it. You know. And we sat down with a lot of people when, sure. when we hit Vegas, when we hit Jersey, Atlantic mm-hmm. City, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. When we mm-hmm. hit those areas, we're sitting down with all the people who bring in these shows to these different areas, and they're serious about it. You know? Good man. Well, I, I hope it happens, man. <laughs> Again, I say thank you so much. Really appreciate, appreciate you it, Ralph, me, man. man. I really, really appreciate it, bro. Uh, number success. I will uh, be on tour with you one day. I don't give a damn if it's the group or just you. <laughs> if we do sixteen to sixteen thousand, we're gonna be there. Let's go. I'm damn scared. I got a number, love. I, I, I'm in the business. I've been in since '85. I know the ups and downs. I know what it takes to hang in and to still be relevant this time. That is incredible, brother. So, right. All I can say is, man, keep shining, homie. No, keep man. Shining, likewise, man. man. You keep doing your thing. Keep making yourself. Uh, just keep make keep finding ways to keep yourself relevant, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what I watched you do throughout the years. I've watched you go from just trying to make it pop, yeah. get that name out there, to mm-hmm. you know, to yeah, what you're yeah, doing yeah. now, man. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, well, we're, we're helping people like you, man. That's what happens. All right, y'all, man. My Thank man. y'all so much, man. We have my man Ralph Tresmat in there. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Before you leave, give a shout out to your Instagram, your social media, and all that kind of oh, stuff. So we can reach you. Shit, the real on. Ralph Tresvant. You know, just Google my name, Ralph Tresvant, man. You're the ones with the Blue checks. <laughs> those, you. Are the, those are the real ones. Those man. You. All right, man. Yeah, I only have a couple of them, so it's sufficient. When you see, you'll see how I keep the up to date with photos and okay. stuff like that. But Good. yeah, it's the real Ralph Trez Van at Instagram and probably the same thing. It's just Ralph Trez Van at Facebook. I haven't TikToked and all that stuff, man. I ain't doing all that right. stuff. Any, any replies? Because you replied to me. I was surprised. You know, some people don't reply, you know, in these situations. You know, so you, 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 I was like, this is really him, you know. But then right. you know, we talked about the tour. He's like, I remember you on the tour. I was like, okay. Could you, be. Yeah, it could be you. It could be you. <laughs> and so now, like I said, you're here. Y'all, give it up one more time. For My Mr. dude. Ralph Trez, man. Ralph Trez, man.
Yo, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, the notification bell if you like the show, man. I, hope, I know you did. Uh, please follow me to support this, uh, this, this is my show, P.S. Panic Room. And I love to see you on the streets, man, when y'all show me love and tell me, yo, I love what you're doing. This is what I work hard to get these people to sit down next to me, come in studio. You can zoom in it. We in studio right now. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys for watching and tell people about it, man. Because I want to get up there with them big numbers too sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So I can give them a bigger swag bag next time you come over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to my man, Rob Trash, man. I love Y'all, we'll holler at y'all. Panic room. Yeah. yeah. I'm Rob Tresvan and I survived Pierre's panic room. <laughs> Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.